Erica here and today I wanted to talk about one of the best books I read in 2015 that I've not yet done a review for because I just read it in December and that is Fortune Smiles by Adam Johnson. This is a short story collection that was published in 2015. Adam Johnson is also the author of The Orphan Master's Son um, which won the Pulitzer a couple of years ago as well as I believe another short story collection and one other novel which I have not read. So this book just came out in 2015. This just won the National Book Award for Fiction, and it is a short story collection. There are only six short stories in this collection, but it is about 300 pages long. So each of the short stories is quite long, um, almost novella length. That being said, I didn't find the short stories to really drag on or feel much longer than your average short story. Um, all of them are very engrossing and they just, they flew by for me. Um, as soon as I sat down to read one, I was totally warped away into another world and I wouldn't stop until the story was over. Each of the stories in this collection are very unique and they are set in very different locations and points in history. The characters are unique as well, but the themes of the stories are kind of interwoven and you can find similarities between them and kind of connect the dots. And that's something that I really appreciate in a short story collection. I want to be able to remember what each individual story was about. Like I don't want them to run together, but at the same time I really appreciate some cohesiveness to the collection as a whole. So for example, one of the short stories in this collection is called George Orwell is a friend of mine and it is about a retired um, man who was the warden of a uh, interrogation prison under the GDR in Germany. Um, and of course at this prison um, acts of torture were committed and so there's one about him. There's a story called Hurricanes Anonymous which is set in post hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, um, which is really heartbreaking. There's another story called Interesting Facts, and that is about, told from the point of view of a woman who has cancer, and it's about her kind of relationship with her husband and her family and her battle with cancer. So like I said, they're all very unique. Um, but again, they have similar themes. There are definitely themes of grief and loss and what we do with our grief and loss and how it manifests differently in different people. Um, there's a lot of illness that runs through the collection, both met mental and physical illness. Um, and in a few of the stories, there's a bit of discussion about what physical illness can do to our mental health. And then there, most of the characters are living under some sort of social or political strife. Um, and the thing that really stood out to me about this collection is this kind of undertone of entrapment. Each of the characters felt like they were trapped in a situation and the situation wasn't necessarily caused by them or due to any direct action they had taken. They didn't ask to be put in a situation, but they were having to deal with the consequences of the situation, if that makes sense. So they're all kind of trapped in a position in life that they don't want to be in and nobody would want to be in. They're not favorable you know, circumstances, but there's not much they can do to get out. There's almost like this feeling of suffocation among the characters in all of these stories. I really enjoyed that aspect of the book. It was tough to read because the themes of this book are so dark. I don't recommend trying to sit down and like read a bunch of these stories back to back. I really recommend that you read like one at a time, like maybe one a day. That's how I read the collection. I don't think there was a day where I read more than one story in this book and I spread it out quite a bit. Um, I didn't even read it like six days in a row or whatever. And I feel like I got so much more out of it because of that. So I definitely recommend not trying to rush this collection at all. I loved this book. Like I said, this was on my favorite books of 2015 list in the short story category. Um, and I, it blew me away. It's one of the best collections of short stories I've ever read. And I'm amazed at Adam Johnson's ability to write. On surface value, like his writing isn't super lyrical. It's not super breathtaking or overwhelming. But the scenes that he writes, 
and the way that his characters develop, it's so powerful. And there are moments that are so impactful that it really just, it blew me away um, that he was able to write so many, I mean, it's only six stories, but every single one of them is absolutely mind-blowing. There's not a story in this collection that I didn't give five stars. I actually, I picked it up before I started filming this video because I just wanted to flip through it a little bit and remind myself of some of the things that I wanted to say. And, as, and it, I took like 45 minutes doing this because I started rereading parts of stories and I got really engrossed again and I really wanted to just pick up the collection and dive right back into it. It's that good. So I definitely recommend this. Um, if you are a short story reader already and you're a fan of George Saunders, I find that some of the the tones and some the tone in some of the stories and the dialogue and the characters were a little bit similar to George Saunders. Um, very reminiscent of him for me. Um, I think that this could also be a really good place to start if you have not read many short story collections and you'd like to. Because, like I said, the stories are a bit longer. They're about 50 pages each. And so they feel more like novellas. They don't go by quite as quickly. Um, they're not left quite as open-ended as other short story collections that I've read. That's, like, a really big generalization. But <laughs> I know that some people have issues with short story collections because there's not a lot of plot or development and things are over so quickly. But these ones um, endure. So I think that this would be a great book for that. And yeah, overall, I really loved it. I can't think of a thing that I didn't like about it. Um, like I said, it's it's dark. And there are moments that are darkly comedic as well. But like, it's a dark collection and it deals with some really tough scenes. And the characters are in really tough situations in general. Um, so if you are not in the mood for something like that, don't pick this up. But... That being said, there's a lot of depth to this and a lot of humanity, and I think it could be enjoyed by such a wide variety of people. I feel like it has so many important things to um, say about, like I said, about how people deal with grief and how they overcome circumstances that are unfavorable and things of that nature, which are just, you know, universal themes. So... If you have read this book and would like to chat about it, I would love to. Um, I don't know too many people who have read it yet. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And that is all I have to say for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will be back soon. Bye.